Greetings, I'm John the Spirit. There was no break between recording episode 6 and episode 7, and welcome to Factorio Pyanodon Super Shorts. Today we're going to mine and process borax, and if we have time we will also work on sand casting and tar from drilling fluid and small parts. I'm going to research quartz processing for now as it will be helpful for improving science soon, but let's focus on borax. Using wood to make syngas is super efficient because when you destructive distillate the wood, you can do the same thing with the coal that comes out of it at the same ratio to get double the results. Although the wood really makes only a small amount of coal gas and tar, so... Here's my quick and dirty setup. All it really needs is one tar gasifier, one syngas gasifier, and the two destructive distillation columns, and of course a gas vent for the flue gas. To deal with the ash, I set up another quick and dirty burner system where the ash will go in and then can pull down and then put back in again. To fuel the furnaces for the iron oxide, I'll pull coke out of this destructive distillation column. Iron oxide is going to be prioritized into this furnace, and I'll use an inserter eventually on this destructive distillation column to pull the iron oxide out of it into this furnace. And now it's running, and everything is doing as I hoped it would do, except what's happening with this burner. All fixed. We now have borax being made. Don't worry too much, we're making only 3 per second in total, so it won't um, oversaturate this belt. I'm now going to research chromium processing because I think I'll need it soon. Here's my simple washer setup. The borax was already all coming in on one side, thank heavens, and so it's getting pulled into the washers with water from this pump jack. I'm dumping tailings into a sinkhole because right now I cannot be bothered to make next light, and I don't even need it right now. And finally, all that borax is going into this passive provider chest, and it's going to fill up pretty quickly, and I won't need this system, but oh well, I mean, hey, it's not that bad, but it's not using that much. And that's borax. Next up on the chain to figure out how to make iron plates from molten iron is to make sand casting. Sand casting requires sand and creosote. Creosote requires tar. And although I can get tar from this system over here, actually, it turns out I can get tar from this system over here without gunking up the system with excessive coal gas or tar. Assuming the system balances properly, which I'm really hoping it will, I think, and this is just an intuition, what I can do to make sure the system balances properly and doesn't clog up like the one down here seems to like to do all the time, is to use a top-up valve. The top-up valve allows flow from the pipes behind it into the pipes in front of it if the pipes in front of it have um, little enough fluid. This vague kind of arrow points in the direction of flow, so I put it right here. This way, the destructive distillation towers, which can run constantly, are kind of the last resort, and the gasifiers will deal with all the tar and coal gas as they see fit until the destructive distillation towers can provide. One mild problem, the syngas is completely saturated, which means the coal gas isn't being used. So what I'm going to do is make an overflow valve, which will figure out when there's too much coal gas, and I'll vent it. Now tar can fill up and enter these um, tar processing units to make creosote and sand casting. To get the sand, we need to wash soil, which I'm getting from a soil extractor. And since I'm not randomly voiding tar, because the only coal gas I'm venting is that from the destructive distillation column and not the coal gas produced by tar over here with the gas fire, once the sand casting fills up, the tar will stop being used and the system will stop venting coal gas pointlessly. Yet another project done, we're on a roll! It will not be useful to get hot air. Coke processing has a method of getting hot air from regenerative heat exchangers whenever you create coke from coal. Obviously, we don't always use our coke, so this isn't a reliable method of getting hot air, but there is another way of getting hot air, which is by burning stone bricks. Why not just do that, you ask? Because we've run out of coke in the system. Turns out these two destructive distillation towers supplying for the syngas were not sufficient to make enough coke for the three carbon dioxide high-pressure furnaces. This is clearly an inconvenience, so we need to make an entire coke processing system. Well, okay, we that was a bit of an exaggeration, but it would be nice. And as an added bonus, we'd get some hot air. As the world of my science grows more and more complicated, I get more and more unsure about where to put things. Where do I put this coke system? Oh no. Luckily, I am not in need of many buildings to make this work. The secondary crushers do require more drew lumen than I have, though. The secondary crushers also require lamps, and I can't get lamps until I research optics, but as you can see, my research is currently stalled from having no coke whatsoever. I'm going to bootstrap it by switching these coke producers to all produce carbon dioxide using biomass and shoving a bunch of biomass into them. There we go, hurrah for optics, almost there. Now I can make my three secondary crushers. For now I'm just going to plop them down down here, with two high pressure furnaces to turn into coke. Secondary crushers will turn coal into crushed coal and coal and coal dust. What precisely I should do with all of that stuff, I don't know, I really only want the coke. 
And until I get rock coal processing too, I can't turn the crushed coal into coarse coal, coal, and coal dust. By the way, I'm researching titanium processing. I'm really genuinely thinking of just throwing out the crushed coal and the coal dust until I can find some other reasonable place to use them. I know, throwing away byproducts, how horrible. So I'm going to dump all of the products onto this conveyor belt, realize at once that an insert isn't going to be enough, and I should probably use a loader. To load evenly, I'll pull out from one directly, and I'll pull out from the others and push onto either side, but this splitter is going to force coal to go to the two coke high-pressure furnaces. The one problem with this setup is that these will run full-time, so to make sure I can handle it all and don't back up, I actually need a third high-pressure furnace. Or I can just expect it all to go to a burner, maybe? Yes, I really am about to do the feed-into-itself burner thing again, because I don't know what else to do with these byproducts right now. The coal to coal coke will produce um, coke oven gas, 250 degrees Celsius. This regenerative heat exchanger can take stone and turn it um, using coke oven gas at 250 degrees Celsius into warm stone bricks. Another regenerative heat exchanger will take the warm stone bricks and turn it into hot air using pressurized air. I can use the excess coke oven gas to fuel a smelter. So I'm going to research storage tanks so I can get a couple big ones and store it. Coke oven gas has a pretty good fuel value, so if the smelter isn't using all of it, I'm just going to overflow valve it into a gas vent. Meanwhile, I'll just exchange the warm stone bricks and the stone bricks between the regenerative heat exchangers. Factory Planner says I'll be making about 10 coke oven gas per second, which means I'll only be using 0.5 stone bricks per second, so one insert each should be okay. Now that I have pie tanks, these 4KL tanks only require lead and not durlumen, and they seem to store a good amount for their size. This way I'll be able to store more coke oven gas and use it in bursts, because I'm not always making durlumen, but I will be as soon as I get better aluminium processing, because man, do I need better aluminium processing, but don't mind me. What to do with the hot air? I've made an automated factory, which lets you use liquids in crafting before you get the proper assembling machine. Why? Because I would like to fill barrels with hot air. I will request barrels which are made with steel and which I'll make a constant supply of, and those barrels will produce hot air barrels, which will be provided with a passive provider chest, which I will also limit. But let's say that somewhere I want to empty hot air barrels, what should I do logistics-wise? I will request hot air barrels using requester chest, but the empty barrels I get will be put into an active provider chest. This will automatically supply, and I think it will high priority supply whatever is in it to anything that requests it. So all of these requester chests will request first from active provider chests, and then from passive provider chests. So I'm going to be creating barrels automatically using steel, but that's going to be going into passive provider chests, so it's at the lowest priority. Active provider chests will do the heavy lifting, because barrels will be cycled through the network rather than randomly deleted. Just like with the coke oven gas, I will vent excess hot air. Using a different overflow valve, apparently from a different mod than whoever made this- wow, I didn't know that at all. For some reason, I just did not notice the discrepancy. I knew the overflow valve looked different, and I was putting down this gaudy thing, and I was just like, what, what, what is this? Anyway, thank you for coming to my TED talk. Here's where my quick and dirty barrel system will be. Steel will flow into the assembling machine to make barrels, and barrels will go into this passive provider chest and be limited. Please don't mind the monstrosity that is this random ribo port. And now barrels are being requested for the hot air. All that's left is supply the rock hole. Five electric mining drills will sufficiently supply this entire system, so the other five are going to get bent down to deal with coke. Here we are, our secondary crushes are working and everything is getting dumped down pretty speedily. This passive provider chest will take all the coke. I'll supply a bunch of stone bricks to the system. And now we've got hot air getting barreled. This system should make me about 0.5 warm stone bricks per second, which corresponds to 3.75 hot air per second. Assuming I'm using it for both aluminium and iron, and I split it half-half, I'll be able to get about 2.5 aluminium plates per second, and 3 iron plates per second, which isn't too bad. But I'll definitely want to expand this soon. Okay, apparently my plan of using a burner to get rid of the crushed coal and coal dust is not working because it's not going into the burner. Instead, I'm going to have to use boilers. I'll be making an excess of 0.5 coal, 0.45 coal dust, and 1.5 crushed coal per second. That's 12.35 megawatts. One boiler will consume 1.8 megawatts. Now, I could continue pointlessly feeding all of this raw coal into these burners, or I can expand this secondary crusher system and use it for more power. The one problem is that secondary crushers require duralumin, and I haven't improved my aluminium production yet. 
My calculations indicate that one extra secondary crusher will provide me a total of 7.45 megawatts. So if I want to recover most of my current power production, I could just make two extra secondary crushers. Which is what I'm going to do. For now, because I'm a fool, I've just made seven boilers that are all dumping into a tailings pond that is venting my steam. Very lovely. New problem, apparently priority splitters don't let excess coal through to the other side. What is my solution? A pretty thoroughly silly one. Note, don't put too many stone bricks in a system where you're exchanging like this, or you'll actually get backups. You should decrease the stone bricks to as little as possible. As you can see, these stone bricks are full, but so are these, so I just have to keep extracting until they're all gone. I've reconnected the excess secondary crushers, but I've also turned all of the boilers into supplying steam engines instead of supplying a tailings pond. Unfortunately, since the steam engines aren't constantly running, the boilers aren't constantly running. The solution is therefore an overflow valve and a tailings pond. It seems like everything is settling down again, to the point that our boilers aren't running constantly, but we'll remediate that as soon as I slap this conveyor belt down. And I will get back to you with whether this whole absurd system is actually working. It looks like hot air actually doesn't stack as well as I'd like it to, so I'll make a buffer of 50 hot air barrels. It looks like the whole world is backing up, everything is fine, and there's nothing to worry about. Except that because of fluid system mechanics, for some reason I needed another tailings pond with another overflow valve. Anyway, everything's fine. And now nothing is backed up. Boom, we now have a quote-unquote large coal processing system, which is extremely wasteful and which I can only really justify because I have basically infinite coal ore here. Normally, I would act as if my coal ore were going to deplete, but there are so many things I need that at this point I just need to stick with what I have and figure out how to use everything later. We'll complete the grand work of supplying coke to this system in droves by setting up a splitter which will take as its input priority the right. That way, the coke I get from this system will have priority input into the main system, but this coal, which I will request from the coal coke passive provider, will come in to supplement the system if need be. But for now, that's it for today's episode. In the next episode, I think we'll work on iron and aluminum processing. Aluminum processing will immediately necessitate another complete revamp of the system. But that's okay, because making and remaking things is really fun. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear. Comments and likes will help me in the algorithm. I hope you enjoyed, and God bless you all.